dark and all alone Growing comfortable Are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? Buried underneath the lies that you believed Safe and sound, stuck in the ground Too lost to be found You're just asleep And it's time to leave
seventh and eighth graders and confirmation families and small group leaders. Welcome to Wednesday night. It is great to be with you. And what I'm more fired up about, even than snow, even though that can be a lot of fun, is I'm fired up about you uh, for the gift that you are. And thank you for being a part uh, of this community together. I think the best thing in life that I want you to know about is God's amazing love for you. And so my hope is in hearing Bible stories, and hanging out in your small groups, whether it's even through Zoom or what have you, uh, then the midst of it, that you know God's love. And especially in times when you feel like you're having a really difficult time or your neighbor's having a good, uh, difficult time, uh, that that love is there to see you through those difficult moments and to build uh, a better world for all of us. And so, welcome. It's great to be with you. Shadows of the alleys. There was Jesus in the fire of us. There was Jesus. Always is and always was. No, I never walk alone. Do I always walk in the way? Praying how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever.
meditations on my heart be pleasing to you, pleasing to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my Good evening, Farmington Lutheran families, and again, welcome tonight, October 21st, family night here, uh, virtual family night here for confirmation. Uh, glad to be with you tonight and excited uh, to share tonight's message with you tonight. Uh, we've been in the middle of a four-week series, as you just saw, How to Survive Middle School, and you just saw the what we've done the last two weeks, and so tonight is another tool that we want to give to you, a powerful tool. It's, it's about how do we practice using our words. Words are powerful. I'm sure you can remember the song, Sticks and Stones May Break My Bones, But Words Will Never Hurt Me. Very untrue. And when someone uses the right words on you, words of encouragement, uh, positivity, you can feel pretty dang good. And when someone uses the wrong ones on you, it can feel pretty harsh and bad. So tonight's tool is using our words for good. King Solomon wrote in the book of Proverbs how powerful words can be. Proverbs 18, chapter 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Solomon isn't saying that we have a choice between life or death. He says life and death are in the power of the tongue, words. When we speak, we create both life and death. When we encourage our friends, we speak life into their self-esteem and death into their doubts. When we gossip about each other, the opposite happens. We speak life into their doubts and death into their image. Proverbs has a lot to say about the effects of our words and how it can change our lives. But I want to focus on this one, this one passage from Proverbs. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And if you love it so much, you will eat its fruit. Wait, what? What does Solomon mean by you will eat its fruit? What Solomon is telling us is that every word we speak will have a consequence in our future. Whatever grows out of your words, you'll have to deal with it. The way you speak in middle school is how you'll pe people will remember you when you're in high school. And the way you speak in high school will affect the future after you graduate. So let me simplify everything into a few points tonight. If you don't own your words, they will eventually own you. What you speak today could direct your tomorrow. The book of Proverbs has a lot to say. As we've been studying in the last couple of weeks throughout through the book of Proverbs, which as I shared is in the middle of the book, uh, in the middle of the Bible, <laughs> right after the book of Psalms. And Proverbs is known for wisdom and guidance. And there's 31 of them, 31 chapters. And so a lot of times people say like, uh, I wanna read the Bible, I don't know where to start. Proverbs is a great place to start because um, there's 31, one day for every day of the month. And so um, the writer really breaks down about our words and how power powerful they are. Another book in the Bible that talks a lot about our words and how we should use them is the book of James, which is a little bit further back in the Bible. It's in the New Testament. In James chapter 3, 3 through 5 reads, If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder. Wherever the will of the pilot directs, so also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. So do you see the power in what James is saying here? A horse is such a large animal, yet we can control it with just a small bit in its mouth. And a ship is so huge and powerful, yet it's directed by a small piece of wood. Your tongue is so small, yet the words we speak could change our entire future. What we speak today could direct our tomorrow. And I also want to say when we talk about words, we're not just talking about the words that we speak, but we also communicate words in text messages, in emails, in social media comments. And how are we using our communication with our words in that way 
uh, to make for a better future. So maybe it means making some changes. Maybe during lunch, uh, you take some time to encourage someone. Maybe you share with someone that they are loved as God's beloved child. What a great reminder of our word, to use our words with. Our future might look better um, when we choose to speak life into someone instead of using our words to speak harshness into someone. Jesus calls us to love our enemies and to minister to our em enemies. And what great way to use our words. So another way that words can be really powerful in a negative way is being a part of gossip. I have been a part of gossip in my life. I've been the one to give it and I've been the one to receive it or hear it about me, and it's hurtful. Gossip in a negative way. Um, and perhaps you can share a story in your life of the way gossip has affected you, uh, parents, youth. And gossip is most likely always negative, and it gets in the way. It's a bad way to use our words. And so I encourage you, as we take on this tool of using our words correctly, to use our words correctly by not using our words to gossip and to stand up to those that are choosing to do that and to use the choice of saying, hey, I think we can use our words. Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 says, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but yet set an example in speech, uh, action, love, and purity. So I want to encourage you with that Bible verse today as we talk about distinguishing out gossip and with using our words as a tool to encourage and uh, change the lives of other people. Today on my way in to Farmington, I stopped to get a sandwich at Arby's and going through the drive-thru and I got up to the teller and this young man, he um, said, hello, how are you doing today? And how's your day going? And it just really caught me off guard. Here he probably sees dozens and dozens of people. I was having kind of a boohoo mor morning and it just brightened my day, total stranger, uh, using as words to encourage someone else. And so we never know the power of our words. And so I want you to think, and you're gonna, in your small group tonight, you're, or in your family discussion guide tonight, you're gonna have some opportunities to begin taking on this tool and to begin using it. I want you to think of your daily lives, you know, your neighbors, um, who you are with at school, who your coworkers are. And our words aren't just words that we speak, Word, we speak, um, we use our words when we text message someone, when we email someone, when we Zoom with someone, um, when we comment on social media. Those are all expressions of our words. And so how taking on this tool, um, can we use these words to really encourage and brighten someone's day? And to when I need encouragement or when you need encouragement, to use your words to reach out and to let someone know that you need that right now. And the last point I want to say that our words should reveal our heart. In each of our hearts, each of us, everyone in the world is each a child of God, created in the image of God. We, we talk about that every week. Beloved children of God, you know, God's masterpiece. And may our words reveal who we are as um, followers of Christ, who we are as um, with our beliefs and what we believe and what we're passionate about, and that it um, would be used to just really take on and encourage others and to change change the world and to change those in our lives and in our family. James 3, 9 through 12 says, with it we bless our Father and Lord, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing my brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. So your teachers and your coaches and all those around you are listening to your words. And they can figure out what kind of a person you are based on how we speak, let alone um, even without our actions. So when it comes out of your mouth, Think about taking on this tool and how can our words that come out be used for good. Luke 6, 45, I'm gonna close with this. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good.
and the evil person out of this evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So out of the abundance of, in your heart, your mouth will speak. And if we don't own our words today, our words might own our tomorrow. We need to strike out gossip with our words, uh, use our words to set an example, and use our and may our words reveal our heart. Uh, amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time to be together. We give you thanks for this day and for one another. Please help us, Lord. Uh, equip us with this tool. Help us to take it on, um, to use our words for good, and to know too, Lord, in everything, we are each beloved children of God, saved by your grace, uh, loved by you. And uh, may we cling to that today and be with us tonight as we meet in our families and help us and lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. receive this blessing and as you receive this blessing receive it as as if it's a gift and um, it is a gift <laughs> and so when we receive it let us reach out our hands to receive this from God may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you may the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit amen and thank you so much for joining in tonight uh, you will see details as far as what next week is going to look like as we begin to move in person. Thank you for being the church together. Thank you for being a part of Confirmation. And um, we're excited to keep moving together. So grateful for you and have a great night. You're my